In my opinion, it's always been this... Oh, good God, son of a... Let's start with the elephant in the room. Tin whistles are cheap. It's meant to be a cheap way to get started playing music, and that's a great thing. You can get them for like 10 bucks. You can also get them for a hell of a lot more than that. So let's find out if it's worth it. Let's quantify this. Over here we've got cost. And let's start with the $10 range, like Generations, Clarks, Fados, whatever. There's differences between them, but they're all mass produced. They all have close to the same reliability. So really it's just a matter of which foibles you like and which you don't. So let's call this line the quality scale and we'll go from nah to holy crap. And these guys go somewhere over here. As well they should. They're only 10 bucks, basically. And you get what you pay for. Nothing wrong with them at all. Classic, classic tin whistle sound. This is a sweet tone, generations, fadogs, all very similar, very traditional tin whistle sound. And that's what you get for about 10 bucks. Now we're talking about a lot of options. I'm gonna call this about 100 bucks, but it ranges from probably 70 to 120. Call it about 100, and that's folks like Gary Humphrey, Killarney, Wild, Lear, which, by the way, I'm gonna do a whole comprehensive review on soon. Stick around for that. Some of the higher end Dixons, all in kind of the ballpark of 100 bucks. And you get another noticeable improvement. Let's say about here. These are what I would call professional instruments. They're tunable, obviously. Good consistent tone between the lower octave and the upper octave. Consistent pressure requirements between the two octaves so you can get used to that. Reasonably strong low D, reasonably strong C sharp, C natural, that sort of thing. like playing that. At this point, it's down to weight, balance, looks, the type of tone that you get, because there are differences between the makers, but what is going to be consistent about anybody at this level is that they're always going to be a high quality, reliable instrument. So what happens if you spend more? Now we're talking about one of two categories. New ones that are running $250 to $350, $400 and up from folks like Burke, John Sint, Sintant, Satanta, 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 or old ones. Great whistles for sure, but additionally valuable just because they're so rare. Things like Copeland's, Abel's, the wooden whistles, uh, O'Reardon, again, wooden whistles there too, Glenn Schultz. You know, I had a Copeland for a while and I'm gonna overlay video evidence of proof that I actually had it and recorded with it. And when I got my first Humphrey, this Humphrey in fact, I sold that Copeland for about 500 bucks, which at the time was great because it was about $150 more than I paid for it. Don't, just pull yourself together. $1,500 for a whistle, that's a little crazy. They're great, don't get me wrong. Copelands in particular are fantastic whistles and I wish I still had it, if only so I could work it into this video but I can remember as clearly as the day my kid was born, when I got this Gary Humphrey whistle, I thought, well, I don't need this one anymore. And I sold the Copeland. So really we're talking about this much difference. Talking about tone quality, reliability, build quality, intonation, all those things that matter, at least to how the instrument sounds, to my ear anyway, there's just not a huge difference. What do you think? Is there a couple of hundred dollars there between the Humphrey? And you know, I don't know. It's That's one of those, I guess, that comes down to personal preference. Tell you what, let's do a lightning round. I'm gonna rip through a couple of tunes, try a few different whistles, back to back, see what you think.
So how much difference do you pick out of all that? $10, $100, $100, I don't know, $400, $350, for something like that. There's a big range and again, to my ear, the sweet spot has always just been the $100 whistles. This, the Killarney, the Wild, they're all in that category. They're gonna give you everything you're gonna need. There's nothing you're gonna get out of something more expensive that's kind of like a deal breaker, a make or break kind of thing. There are advantages to this. This is probably a little bit more consistent, uh, at least for the, between the, the first half of the second octave volume wise than the Humphrey is. The Humphrey is a little quieter on the, on the bottom end. Not exactly a huge problem. And, and definitely not one to me that's worth spending an extra couple hundred bucks. But then again, there's a market for pretty much everything. If you're in the market for one of these supercar level whistles, I'm curious, let me know why. Let me know which one, let me know what jumped out at you about it. Are you going for something that you just can't find anymore? Because I could certainly understand the appeal of that. Uh, again, I do wish I still had my old Copeland back just for that nostalgia purpose. If you're interested in those, let me know. Let me know what you think and let me know what you think about the take on this. Where's the sweet spot to you? All right, that's a lot of stuff to ask. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Cheers.